everybody it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So here I am for days 8 through 15 of 30 inks and 30 days and I'm doing it as lots of seven or eight pen and ink pairings and I'm really excited about this coming week. So you can see I already have the inks ready to go here. When I do 30 inks 30 days I actually plan it out ahead of time because I kind of like my inks to match their pens so I also want to make sure that I'm using up inks that I haven't written with before so that takes a little bit of preparation for for me I don't pick out my inks randomly on the day so what I'll be doing then for 30 inks 30 days is I'll actually be filling out my b6 Galen leather notebook so I fill in a grid with all of the colors and then I write down the pen and ink combination and then I do a little splatter and then I also journal in my Hobonichi Cousin which has the Tomoe River paper and then I also, it's still a little wet here, also do a little transcribing in my Hobonichi A5 notebook. So there are three different places that I do the swatching but I also have two places that I'm doing a little bit of writing and that allows me to really get to know the pen and ink pairing even if it's for only one day. All right let's go on to day eight. Day one, we have Ferris wheel press Peter Moss. I forgot what it was for a sec, and I'm putting it into my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Monio Nuts. I apologize for my voice. I have been sick and almost didn't record this voiceover, but I wanted to show you guys how I'm filling up each pen, and that sample ink vial is from Fountain Pendulum, who I will link in the description below. It took me a few tries to get it filled up. But then I'm putting a drop with my pipette onto my B6 Galen leather notebook and swirling it with the sample ink vial, then writing day eight and the name of the ink. And so far, I really like this green. It's such a rich green without being too, too bright. The next thing I do is write down on this page all the list of the inks like I would for my regular currently inked for the month. And I fill in this square so it gives me an idea of how wet the ink is in the pen. And in my Sailor Monio Nuts, it's actually not too bad. I had this tuned and smoothed by Kirk Spear at the San Francisco Pen Show because it just wasn't smooth enough and it was a little dry. And after that, this pen writes amazingly. I had even considered at one point selling it, but then I'm like, no, I will just get Kirk Spear to look at it. And he actually spent the most time with this pen out of the four pens that I had done. And now it just like writes like a dream. Love it. The next thing I do is then put a couple of drops onto my Hobonichi A5 Cousin and this is the way I'm decorating my journal for the month of September for 30 inks 30 days where I actually take a sandwich bag and swirl the drops of ink around and what I'm finding is that more ink doesn't necessarily mean more it's actually less ink will give me more varied what do I want to say like varied veins of the ink because I don't want it to look just like big blobs I want it to look like vein like tiny veins of ink so I'm learning and I'm surprised that I didn't get I'm pointing at the screen while I'm doing this voiceover but I'm surprised I didn't get my arm wet on the ink there so I'm writing out my to-do list for the day and I really love being able to decorate the journal this way with the ink that I'm using. The next thing I decide to do, I'm actually transcribing Anne of Green Gables. So instead of doing the swirls with the back of my dip pen, I decide I'm gonna paint some florals. And doing this little daily practice of doing some daily florals takes like no more than five, 10 minutes. And it really is about the pressure that you're putting on the brush and the little types of swirls that you're doing. I'm so far loving the practice. So those are my fountain pen ink roses. And then here I am writing the name of the ink with the pen. And I really love the practice of transcribing and of Green Gables because it gives me that extra place where I'm using this pen and ink combination without necessarily having to think about it. All I'm doing is copying words onto paper. And then there you can see the beautiful ink, like the way that it shades is gorgeous. And I really like the way that it looks in that rose and here is the writing sample of this ink so that is ferris wheel peter moss 
A9 and we have Birmingham Pen Co. Freshwater Bog. And this is inked up in my Novelor Nautilus Primary Manipulation. This was a Pen Chalet exclusive from quite a few months ago. And this one is a piston filler. So I tried to fill it not too, too much because this has quite a huge ink capacity. So I tried to fill up the converters or the piston by, you know, not too, too much. So placing a drop there on my Galen Leather notebook and swirling it around and I love that blue. I think it's a perfect match for this pen. Now this pen has a steel nib and I actually had this ground by Jack Hernandez from a fine nib down to an extra fine and I love it. It's got a little bit of like an architect edge to it. I really, really like this nib. And then writing it down for day nine. Jack Hernandez ground this so that it is also extra wet for me. I like my pens to be a little bit on the wetter side, not fire hoses, but just like seven out of 10 on the wetness scale. And with the extra fine nib, I find inks just work really, really well in this pen. I found the two were a really, really great pairing because this ink just has such great shading as blue. And in this extra fine nib, there wasn't any issues with the flow whatsoever. So I really, really enjoyed writing with this one. And then you'll see as well shortly here in my Hobonichi cousin, I am going to put a couple of blobs <laughs> on the page or drops using my pipette and then using my, I was going to say garbage bag. No, it's the sandwich bag method to swirl the paint around. And it's a great way to be able to see the tiny veins of the the fountain pen ink, but then also see the really great areas of shading. And this is a great non-messy way of being able to get such unique variations in your ink. I really like this method and I credit this method to Clarissa of the Snowy Studio. So then I'm writing my to-do list for the day. And I really actually like writing with the Novelord Nautilus or this particular model because it fits really well in my hand. But I also find that this pen and ink pairing, like I said before, is a really, really good, um, <laughs> good nib and wetness pairing as well. So then in my A5 notebook, I am painting hydrangeas with this ink. And the tutorials for the floral paintings I'm doing through Jenna Rainey on YouTube. And I love the way that fountain pen ink shades and the color variation. And you'll really see it in this ink that it looks a little bit like a chromo shading ink when it dries because the shading of freshwater bog, it kind of turns purple, it kind of turns green, but you don't see that in the writing sample as much. But by painting it onto the Tomoe River paper, it shows off some of those beautiful colors and properties. And it's kind of like doing a chromatography when you're adding water to the fountain pen ink. So then I'm writing the name of the ink and the pen pairing, and I really love the act of transcribing, like I've said before. Transcribing for me really allows me just that set time to use just that pen and ink pairing, and it's also really getting me through the book quite quickly. <laughs> you know, committing to writing two pages, not two pages of the book, but two pages in my notebook out of Anne of Green Gables. And this is a book that I read when I was younger and I'm so glad to be reading it now. But look at the shading in those ink splotches and look at the color variation in that hydrangea. But look at how different it looks from the writing sample compared to the floral. So this is Birmingham Penco Freshwater Bog. Day 10 and we have Birmingham Penco Terracotta. And this is a very pretty kind of corally orange and I say corally orange, that's not true. It's like a really dusty pink and it matches so well in my new Paris and Bloom pen from Hogtown Pens. And this isn't a satin finish. If you haven't seen the video for that yet, go ahead and watch that because I love this pen. And I think it's just such a perfect match. The pink in the pen brings out, is being brought out by the, the pink in the ink. <laughs> Having trouble with words today. But here you can see on the paper, it comes out really light. 
not saying that it's not saturated enough, but it like on camera, you can tell it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm wondering if adding white lightning would help improve the saturation of this. But when you look at it through the ink splatter and the sandwich bag method, you can see it is a beautiful dark saturated ink. I think it might just be the way that it comes out in the pen. So I wonder if white lightning would improve that a bit. Because I think when I'm writing with it, when it first goes down, it looks really light. But when it dries, it is legible and it is lovely. Oh, I love this method. I'm trying to put less ink on the page to get more of those little tiny spider veins that come out of the ink, which I think adds more variation. Ooh, love that. And here I am, I am draw or drawing, painting peonies with this ink. Peonies are some of the ones that I love painting the most because it really is about little pressure, lots of pressure, little pressure, and then kind of doing like the, the swirly, or what was the scientific name that Jenna had for it? It really is about the, the flitting action of your wrist with the paintbrush and then adding a little bit of shading with some more saturated areas of ink. And playing around with fountain pen ink for painting is very different from watercolor, especially on Tomoe River paper. Working with two different mediums and trying to make them work for me. And so far, I'm actually loving the experimentation. I'm loving the process. And I'm so glad to be able to do this in my notebook. And to paint a little bit every day maybe takes five to ten minutes. And you're improving just a little bit every single day. So then you can tell here while I'm writing, it looks really light when I first put the pen to paper, but when it dries, the writing sample is actually much, much darker. Well, not much, much darker, but it is darker, a little bit more legible and very, very pretty. But I do love how it comes out in this extra fine nib. This extra fine nib feels like it was tuned, especially by Terry of Hogtown Pens, and it is such a smooth writer for an extra fine nib, and I love it. And actually the wetness of this ink, the wet, the ink itself is quite wet, but maybe it's not saturated enough when it comes out. Look at the shading. I mean, yes, there's some shadowing from the other page, but look at how it looks now when it, once it's dried and you can see how beautiful that peony is. That one looks like a blob. Ooh. <laughs> but anyway, I really like Birmingham Pen Co. Terracotta. Day 11, we have, well, you can't really see it here from the label, but this one was sent to me by Shazia of Bleskit Canada, and I'm putting it in my Laban 325 Cambridge as that pen body rolls away. Don't worry, I caught it in my lap. And this ink is such an interesting one. I didn't think I would like it, but when you swirl it, it's this really deep, rich purple. And when it dries, I'm not gonna tell you right now. You're just gonna have to wait for later pictures to see what it looks like when it's dried because it's such an interesting ink. And in my Le Bon 325, this was a broad nib that was ground down to maybe like a medium fine stub. And it is a very wet writer. This was done by Mark Bacchus for me. And I really love this pairing because this nib shows off the properties of this ink really, really well. So here, putting a few drops down in my Hobonichi Cousin, and you'll be you'll really be able to see the properties of this ink with this sandwich bag method. Oh, I hope that you get to see it here, but it is so, so pretty. And I hope to actually use this ink again come October. I'm hoping to re-ink a pen with this because it is so pretty. It's nothing that I would normally have gone for before but the deep rich tones of the purple. And then when it dries, when it dries, there's a bit of a surprise there. It's a perfect Halloween color. When you look at it, see, do you see the gold shimmer and the green sheen? It's so pretty. And it's not clogging up my pen at all. I don't normally go for inks with that kind of sheen or this kind of dark shimmer, but I really, really liked this pairing. I was really amazed at how well, one, it wasn't smudging, you know, after a few days, but two, there's still beautiful properties, especially when I'm painting with it. I'm going to be painting roses with this because I feel like by adding a little bit of water, you'll be able to get a little bit more shading. I love doing roses as well because they're a great 
beginner watercolor floral because you start very fine and then you work on that pressure to get those larger petals towards the edges. So start really, really tiny and then work your way to the really big petals around the edge. And then I'm going to go back here once the ink has dried a little bit, I'll go back and add some more saturated ink into certain areas and that's where you'll see it dry with the shimmer and the sheen. Really love how these roses came out because of the color variation, because of the sheening, because of the shimmer. And then here I am just on a Friday night writing with it. Was it Friday? It was one of these days I was writing and transcribing and I really enjoyed this and I felt like I could have written more than just the two pages that I had allocated for myself. I could have written, you know, three, four or five pages with this because it was such a fun ink. Look at that shade and shimmer and sheen and even in the rose, such a gorgeous ink. You don't see it as much in the writing sample, which is why I'm glad I did the roses and the splatter so you could really see the characteristics of that ink. So that is Van Diemen's May. Day 12 and we have Birmingham Penco Copperhead. I have a lot of Birmingham Penco in this round and I am putting it in my Esterbrook ST Petrified Forest. I love my Esterbrook SCs. I tried not to fill these two too much. I really should have only filled them about quarter of the way, but I didn't want to run out midway through the week. Side note, look at Van Diemen's May. It looks so crazy, but I love it. So this Birmingham Penco Copperhead it looks so different in the writing sample versus when I end up doing the swatches. It's a really, really interesting ink, and I think it was a perfect match for the Esterbrook Estee in terms of the coloring and the shading of it. Was it the most pleasurable writing experience? Unfortunately not. I felt like when I was writing with it, it went down very light, not saturated enough, and it made me feel want to push down harder on my pen and I know I shouldn't be doing that and I said that about another ink in my last video as well but going down it felt really light but in the swatches it looks so so cool but you'll see here in the rating sample it looks so light when it first goes down and then it eventually dries to a nice legible color but I think for me personally if I have trouble seeing it while I'm writing with it it's not an enjoyable experience. I don't want to have to wait for it to dry for me to be able to read it. I'd like to be able to read it as I'm writing with it. So here I am writing with it on my Hobonichi or in my Hobonichi cousin. And then here I am painting some camellias with it. So a different type of floral and I'm using a smaller paintbrush here as well. But this one is more using just like the, the flitty flitty i don't know if that's a word but like little tiny flip motions with the brush and getting those little tiny details and then i'm adding a second floral here on this side as well just to add a little bit more detail it's so funny though that when i'm watching this over again and doing the voiceover the color looks more coral orangey brown but when it dries it looks more pink and you'll see that shortly here, that this ink does dry a slightly different color, I think just because I've added that water to it. To, you know, when I'm painting, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it to change up the, the shading a little bit. And here I am adding a little bit more of the saturated ink to add a little bit more detail. And then adding in some leaves with my Pelican M605. So there I am writing with the SD Day 12. <laughs> can't believe I've done day 12 already. Birmingham Pen Co. Copperhead. And I, I do have to admit, I do like the color, but in terms of the saturation when the ink first goes down, it is a little too light for me. And I think this might not be one that I continue to explore. I think you can see how beautiful it is in the ink swatch and even in... See? It looks pink here. It looks pink here, but then in the writing sample, it looks like it should. So that is Birmingham Penco Copperhead. How different does that look? 
day 13 and we have Wearing Ghoul Vayu. And this was a sample that I had purchased from Penn Chalet. I think I had been keeping this in my cart for quite a few months until I actually purchased it. And I'm filling my Pelican M605 in the green and white stripes. I'm putting just a little bit down and I know that this ink is gonna be very, very light. And my Pelican M605 has a fine cursive smooth italic and it is a very wet nib, but it's this ink though is so light. I was not a huge fan, unfortunately. So this is one that I don't think I will end up keeping. This is just not for me. Although I mean, painting with it was fun, I just don't think for writing it was necessarily for me because I mean even in this fine cursive smooth italic it's hard to read. So I'm glad that I do some experimentation or exploration by doing these swatches because then it allows me to see the different characteristics of the ink not just through the writing but see the different shading properties so it, it allows me then to do more than just write with the ink because some of these inks you <laughs> this one was in slow-mo I accidentally <laughs> I accidentally recorded this in slow motion <laughs> and I'm trying to do it at speed is sped up at like eight times and that was as best as I could do so at least with this method you could see a little bit of the shading better but with writing there really is a difference when I'm writing with it with that fine cursive smooth italic I love this nib. It's so smooth yet slicey because of that cursive smooth italic. But with this ink, I'm sorry, it's not for me. It was a little too light. And who who knew that I would be saying that because I do love light inks, but this one is just verging on just that little bit too light. I mean, the shading in those splotches, swatches, is really, really cool. But I wish more of that dark green turned up in the writing sample. So here, instead of florals, I'm gonna paint leaves. And there are some great, great exercises by different artists on YouTube. And really when it comes to painting leaves, it really is just about the pressure that you're putting on your paintbrush. And you can see here, even when I'm painting with it, it's so light. It's hard to see it even when I'm painting with it. So I had to go over the leaves a second time just to even get a little bit of color. And maybe it's the light, but Painting leaves is actually a very, very calming and relaxing exercise. So I'm gonna do this at the bottom again. But again, this ink is just so light. Again, not one that I need further exploring of. I feel like what I've used it for, for 30 inks in 30 days, it has, you know, it it's reached its peak with me. <laughs> you know, I love my greens. I do and I feel bad for saying that I don't like any green, but again, this one is just too light. And you'll be able to see here as I'm writing with it that while it's so nice, like my this nib is fantastic. Like you can see here, it is hard to write or hard to see from the very beginning. So unfortunately, this one is one that I probably won't keep after 30 inks, 30 days. And you'll see here, it's just beautiful. Day 14, we have Robert Oster Dusky Pink. And this one was sent to me, I believe it was by Marilyn Gardner. I'm trying to remember now. <laughs> I've had so many inks that I haven't used in the last few months. And I'm putting this in my Zodiac Penco Water Lily Koi. Perfect, perfect match for this pen and ink. Gosh, the pink in this is so, so pretty. And you can see it once I swirl it around with my sample ink bio, like how gorgeous is that pink? you can see how beautifully it matches with the pink in the pen in day 14. 14 is my lucky number. 14 is mine and my family's lucky number because <laughs> mine and my husband's anniversary is June 14th. My daughter's birthday is the 14th of August and Henry was born December, or no, 2014. So 14 is our lucky number. So anyway, tangent. So with Robert Oster Dusky Pink, I have a fine nib on this Zodiac Pen Co. Water Lily Koi, and the two together actually have a great pen and ink flow, ink flow with this. And I had no struggles with using this in my fine Yovo nib. And then I'm going to swirl it around 
my Hobonichi cousin with my sandwich bag. I find it so funny that this method, if you don't know what it is, looks so complicated. But literally, it's a sandwich bag. It's a Ziploc bag with just a pipette. And these pipettes you can buy off of Amazon. You can buy like a hundred for thirteen dollars. It's really really cheap. And I reuse them. I, I rinse them out and I, I rinse them out in between each ink and then reuse them. But oh, look at the effect with just a sandwich bag and pipette and ink. And then I'm going to paint. What did I end up painting with this one? I ended up painting dahlias with this. There's different, definitely different ways you can paint dahlias but I really liked this method. I used a smaller brush and then played around with how much water I put on the brush so that I get different layers of this ink. You can see the saturation of the ink when I add very little water and then the saturation as I add more water. So it really is such a gorgeous, gorgeous ink and I'm so glad that I played around with this as a fountain pen ink painting because it gave the experiment, experimentation a little bit more depth as well. So then I'm gonna add some leaves using Waringal Vayu here. So it, that ink is really great for leaves, maybe not so great for the writing. <laughs> but look at the way that that floral looks now with the different layers of the ink, so, so pretty. And writing with my Zodiac Pen Co in the water lily koi. This was the first pen that I purchased from Bart of Zodiac Pen Co. And it, and it feels like I've known him for way longer than I've had this pen. He is so, so lovely and such a great pen maker. And I'm so glad to have gotten to know him. But look at how beautiful the writing sample is with the fountain pen ink painting. I'm a big fan of Robert Oster, dusky pink. Oh, so, so pretty. And just the writing sample. It was a pleasure to write with this. Day 15, and we have Birmingham Penco, Pennsylvania Fieldstone. I wasn't sure how this would work out in my Just Turning's pastel primary manipulation, and this has an extra fine nib. But this one I really liked because the shading of this was so interesting. And just from the little sticker that was on top of the sample ball. I thought it was gray, but then when I actually swirled it around with my sample ink file, you're going to see it looks gray, <laughs> purpley mauve gray, but when it dries, it's actually such a fantastic, fantastic color. And it really was wonderfully wet in my extra fine nib. So it was, there were no issues with this being a dry ink. This was really nice to write with in my extra fine nib. So you'll be able to see here, because I draw that rectangle, that helps me to figure out how wet an ink is by how much I can fill this rectangle without struggling too, too much. And I really like that there are different ways that I'm using these pens and these inks because I wanna make sure that I explore the ink as much as I can within that 24 hours that I have it. And just as a side note, it really isn't just 24 hours that I use this. I It took me a few days to catch up on the transcribing. Some of these I film ahead of time. So these don't always all happen on the same day. It I do what I can in the time that I have. And when I choose, oh, <laughs> when I choose my inks, I don't randomly choose them like a lot of other people do. I plan these out ahead of time in a spreadsheet because that's what I do. I like to plan out my inks at a time just because, just so that I know that I'm actually using the inks that I have, that I haven't used yet. And this one was such a pretty one and I feel like it matches my nail polish really well. But this sandwich bag method really showed off the shading and the different shades of purple in this ink. I loved this one so, so much. And painting with it as well was really, really fun. I painted these crocus flowers using this ink and that little dish on the side there that looks like a flower I got from Stationery Pal. And these ones, these flowers, like the crocus looks very similar to a tulip when you paint them. And they were really, really easy to do. So I highly recommend 
trying out, <clears throat> excuse me, trying out Jenna Rainey on YouTube. She's got some great little tutorials for how to paint florals very, very quickly with very easy strokes as well. And what I like about painting these florals is that I play around with the saturation of the ink by adding more water, less water, and you can see the, the effects that it has on the shading and even a little bit on the chromatography as well. So adding some leaves there with Wearing Bowl Vayu, and I'm really happy with the result of that. Oh, florals, look at that ink, gorgeous. I'm loving how this turned into a really beautiful mauve purple, and I added that butterfly sticker there that Kat had sent me as well. And then look at it in the writing sample. This probably is one of my favorites in this week. So this is Birmingham Pen Co. Pennsylvania Fieldstone. So here we are at the end of days eight through 15 and I really loved all, well, no, that's a lie. I did not love all of these inks. I, in if we're gonna go with my favorite ink, and this is a tough one, but I think my, my top three, Oh, even saying that is hard. But I really liked Ferris Wheel Press Peter Moss. I really liked Birmingham Pen Co. Freshwater Bog. Uh, Birmingham Terracotta was okay. And then I really liked Van Diemen's May. And I don't normally like things that are so high in the sheen, but I, in the shimmer, but I really liked that. Birmingham Pen Co. Copperhead was again okay. Wearing Gold Valley was probably my least favorite. I really like Robert Us Oster Dusky Rose, and I liked Birmingham Pen Co. Pennsylvania Fieldstone. So, you know, out of those inks, there were really only like maybe two or three that were just okay or I didn't like, and there are other five I really did like. And then in terms of the pen and ink pairings, I really liked writing with the Narwhal Nautilus Primary Manipulation with the Birmingham Pen Co. Freshwater Bog. I love writing with my new Hogtown Pens Paris and Bloom in that satin finish because it just feels so silky, that pen. But I wasn't necessarily a fan of that particular ink, but I loved writing with the pen. I loved writing with the Le Bon 325 because the, the combination of that nib with that ink, just beautiful. I love writing with my SD. I always love writing with my SD, but I don't think I was a big fan of that ink. It sometimes came out a bit too light and felt too dry. Uh, wearing Gold Value with the Pelican M605, not a fan, unfortunately. Really great for painting, not great for writing. And then Robert Oster, Dusky Rose was beautiful in my Water Lily Koi. And I really liked the shading of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Fieldstone in my Just Turnings Pastel Primary Manipulation. So out of all of these, which one did you like best or which one surprised you and which one would you like to try yourself in the future? So that is it for this week. Watch out for days 16 through 23 coming next week and let me know if there's anything that you'd want to try or if you would ever do 30 inks 30 days or if this format could be changed up for you. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear that all down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.